Painting Space! In this video, we will be painting Starscapes, Nebula, Space and Stars on our Wargame models. We will try to create this effect both with the help of an airbrush and also without. For those used to painting block colour, this effect might seem difficult or intimidating, but as we shall show, it is actually quite easy with a few simple techniques. You need not be a golden demon winner to pull this off. It is well within the reach of anyone aiming for a basic tabletop standard like myself. In fact, this Eldar Falcon and Wave Serpent you see here are my first two attempts at this effect, so it does not even require much practice. In the first part we will try this out with an airbrush and in the second part we will attempt this effect without an airbrush. Of course we will start with a blank canvas or should I say a black canvas. Space is black so the best foundation colour to work up from will be black. I will be working straight atop black primer. The airbrush is a bit spray and pray so it helps to work on sub assemblies to reduce the work with masking. I am going to be painting this starscape on the top hull of this wave serpent so I will get it all done before fitting the cockpit and turrets. This will completely eliminate the need to do any masking. There are two things we can do with an airbrush to help create this effect. The first thing is we can create the foundation to our nebulas with a light spray of white ink or paint to get a cloud effect. We want to do this a bit randomly to get a variation of intensity. We can also spray over a ragged edged template to put harder edges on our clouds. I try this with a torn up piece of paper. Once we are happy with the density of cloud cover we can then tint them with streaks of colour to give them that nebula look. The sort of colours that work well here are blues, purples and reds. The tint should be applied with very translucent paints. We do not want to cover the clouds, just change their colour. To this end we could dilute paint to a glaze or else use inks or washes. We apply the inks with a brush in streaks and splotches over the white clouds. There it is, the clouds of coloured dust in the interstellar media. Now to create the stars. It is better to put the bulk of our stars down after the nebulae because we will not want them to be tinted by the coloured washes so that they will stand out and also look more star-like. To create stars we need dots or tight splotches of white or also yellow. This is the other thing we can do with an airbrush. Airbrush users will know that incorrect use of an airbrush can result in something called speckling. This is where the paint does not come out in a diffuse mist but as more concentrated particles of paint. Generally we would not want to do that but in this case if we can induce speckling it will give us an effect quite like that of a sprinkling of stars. To intentionally get speckling I suggest you let a little paint out onto the tip without engaging the air, let it dry a moment on the tip and then give it a blast of air without opening the paint. On a dual action airbrush you can release paint by pulling back on the trigger without pressing down and you can engage air by pressing down without pulling back. Right, so here we go, a starscape with nebula using an airbrush. Now we will look at how we can do it without an airbrush. If you are an airbrush user, stick around because what follows can just as well be used in addition to an airbrush as without one. This time I will be creating the effects on this Eldar Falcon. As you can see I have already painted the turret and pilots separately even though we are not using an airbrush here. It will still help to paint in sub-assemblies. As before we will want to get our nebula down first but 
how to create diffuse clouds without an airbrush. The best way will be to stipple on white paint using a ripped up piece of sponge. We will not want it to go on too hard and thick, but instead gently build it up. It is easier to add than subtract. I suggest mixing your white paint with some water or glazing medium to make it a bit translucent and drying most of it on a tissue before applying. Apply by gentle taps or harder presses to get a variation in intensity. Once we have enough of our cloud, we can tint them in blue, red and purple, just as we did before with the wave serpent. I wanted to see how this starscape will look with more black space and fainter nebula, so I have been very sparing applying the white for the nebula base. I think you could recreate the denser clouds I created on the wave serpent just by sponging on the paint for longer. The nice thing about using a sponge instead of an airbrush is that it can create very fine dots which can also pass for tiny distant stars. Now we want to add the stars. I would say there are three different ways to add stars without an airbrush. First, we can use a stiff brush and flick it on. I am using a toothbrush, but you could use a stiff paintbrush too. Get your white or yellow paint on the brush and just flick it so that when the brush comes to a stop, the paint droplets will carry on through the air until hitting the surface. Another way would be to use a brush to gently stipple on your stars. You need to be very careful that the brush will not bend on contact or it will smear instead of dot. Finally, we can use a white ink pen like this to dot on the stars. Flicking is very random but lays down many stars and small stars with little effort. Dotting with a brush or pen is slower but more deliberate. There we go, that is all there is to it really. Let me know in the comments what you think about airbrush techniques versus techniques that do not use the airbrush. Which kind of techniques would you like to see more videos about and whatever else you like to talk about. Of course you could also stipple that subscriber button, flick that like button and even be a star by sharing this video with your mates. Otherwise why not watch this video here about my Eldar craft world army. Bye for now.